everybody. Welcome back to Gardening with the Landscape Connection. My name is Michelle Cox and I will be your hostess. We are in Northern Illinois, Zone 5. So my husband and I own a garden center. It's called the Landscape Connection. We also own a floral store, which is called Stems Floral. Look, it's right inside the Landscape Connection. So it's kind of a two-in-one kind of thing. Now, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Today is Thursday and Valentine's Day is five days away, but not everybody wants flowers. So I'm gonna make up some succulent gardens and I thought I'd take you along with me and show you how I do that. So succulents are amazing things because they have the ability to store water in their leaves and they can go a super long time without watering and they actually do wanna dry out in between those waterings. They usually have a really good root system on them and even if I were to take this succulent right now and snap it off of here, I could let that heal over and then nestle that right down in the dirt and it would grow new roots and it would be totally okay. Isn't that cool? Now, the one thing with succulents you wanna be aware of though is succulents need really good dirt and they do need to have dirt that the water is gonna drain through really super fast. So this is not a plant that you trickle water on and it's not a plant that you missed. They need good watering. So basically when I water, I wanna get this whole thing nice and wet but I want the water to drain out. And then what's gonna happen is this plant is gonna pull all of that water up through it into the leaves and then it's gonna store it again. So every time you water it, you wanna water it really deeply so that it can do that and then let it dry out and then water it again really deeply and then let it dry out. So you wanna make sure drainage is important. Now, maybe you are a little more advanced in your gardening skills and you got a, a lot of experience with succulents and you can do it in a container that doesn't have drainage, and you know that if you do that or you want to try that, make sure that after you're done watering, you tip that container to the side and get all that extra water out of there so that your roots aren't sitting in water. Because if they are, they have the tendency to rot out and they'll get stinky and you'll get bugs and ew, it'll be really icky. So you don't want to do that. So be careful if you do use a container that doesn't have drainage. Now, I like to use succulent soil. So in here, I have my Fertilome succulent soil and I am gonna pre-moisten this before we get going and we make our planter. Now, if you don't have any succulent soil, uh, cactus soil works too, but if you don't have any of that, let's say you have a leftover bag of uh, garden potting soil in your garden, you can actually make that a little more, I don't know if this is the word, aerable, uh, by adding perlite to it. So perlite are these little white things that you see in the soil. You could add more of that or you could add some wash sand. And I would do like a 50-50 mix of the potting soil and the sand or the potting soil and the perlite. And then you can mix that up and that will make it so that the soil uh, will drain faster. And that is what your succulents want. Now, there are a lot of different succulents. There's hens and chicks, there's sedums, there's uh, the tall stone crop, that's in the succulent family. I got a peperomia here, this is in the succulent family. Aloe is in the succulent family. Um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but uh, there's, I don't know if it's Hawthorias or Hawthorias, I'm not sure how to say that, but those are in the succulent family. Mother-in-law tongues, those are in the succulent family. So lots of plants out there that are in that category. And any of them are compatible together in a dish garden. And you can really pack them together because they know that you've packed them together and it really slows down their growth. I don't fertilize my succulents at all. I want them to grow slow. I don't want to have to tear my succulent gardens apart. Typically, I can get about a year, maybe sometimes a year and a half out of a succulent garden before I have to tear it apart. And then I just repurpose everything in it and just make a fresh one over again. Very rarely do I lose the succulents. Uh, I take mine outside in the summer after the temperatures are above 50 degrees, both day and night and I do get it acclimated to going outside by bringing it outside for a couple hours, three to four days in a row, and then bringing it back in and getting it used to going outside. The other thing is I don't put it in direct sun. I make sure that it gets really super good light and I don't put it in the shade, but I don't put it in direct sun because it will scorch the leaves. And most of the time when you're doing your succulent gardens, a lot of them are in shallower containers and they will dry out faster in a shallower container. So you want to be aware of, it's not once a month you water it. It really depends on how much dirt is in the container and it's going to depend on how deep the container is and it will depend where you put it. Now inside, it is really hard to get enough light on a succulent where it's not going to stretch. And so 
instead of growing out or just getting bigger, the center will start to grow up and out. And when you see that and it starts to stretch out, that's telling you that it's stretching towards the light and it wants more light. So you might have to go get a lamp and put a lamp on it. A lot of times, even in a south window in the winter, that's not enough light for the succulent. And the other thing is you might find yourself, you might have to turn it. You might see them leaning one way or the other, going for that sun inside in the winter. And it's not that you can't do it. You just have to pay a little more attention to your plants so that they get the care that they need. Now, I'm gonna make a planter today and as I said, not everybody wants flowers for Valentine's Day, so we like to have a couple options ready for them. So here I've got my succulent dirt all ready to go, and I'm gonna put gloves on, and we're gonna get some water, and we're gonna pre-moisten this. So I like to pre-moisten the dirt, one, so that if the succulents are dry, they're gonna get watered, especially uh, I know if this is gonna go out the door as a gift. And two, I wanna make sure that I can anchor everything into the pots, and it's easier to anchor everything in if the soil is damp. Now, I'm not trying to get this sopping wet. I just want to get enough water in here that I could make a ball, but I don't have water dripping out. And so I'm just going to add enough water to do that. And I'm going to mix this up, and then we'll push it to the side, and then I'll show you this really cool container that I got. Now, you can pretty much make succulents in anything. I have made, <laughs> I've made succulents in some pretty weird things. Now, let's say that you don't have um, a container that's got like uh, a vessel or, you know, like, I don't even know how to describe it, uh, like a pot, you know, that's got where you can put the dirt in it and you have to actually create the vessel like in a bird cage or something. You can do that with moss. And so what you would do is you could use sheet moss because it comes in big sheets and you would get that wet. And then you would form that in the bottom of whatever uh, vessel that you're using to create like a little nest with the green side out and the brown side in and then you go as high as you need to and then you make your base of dirt. Now you couldn't put hydrostones in the bottom of that too to bring it up a layer and one of the things you want to do is like let's say you're going to use a bird cage to do that I would highly recommend poking some holes in the bottom so you still have drainage but you could make your little I guess dirt reservoir out of moss in a container as well. I've made them in lanterns, I've made them in glass bowls, and been able to do that very successfully. Okay, so as you can see here, I can make a ball, but no water is coming out, so this will be perfect. It'll allow me to anchor uh, my succulents into the container that I'm going to make the garden in. So with that, I'm going to get my stuff out of the way here. So I'm gonna put my watering can over here. I'm gonna move all my succulents over here so that I can just turn this and get it out of the way. Now, because I'm working on a glass container here, I don't really wanna scratch this counter all up. So I'm gonna get a piece of cardboard and put it down because I've decided to make this succulent garden. Wait till you see this. Oh, check it out. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make it in this truck. How cool is this truck? I think this is so awesome looking. And so I'm gonna make it in the truck and see it does have a drainage hole right here on the bottom. So I don't have to worry about that. And what's cool about this is I'm gonna theme it out in Valentine's Day, but anything that I put in it, I'll be able to take out if I don't sell this one at Valentine's Day and I can flip it to Easter. So it'll be really cool. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do to do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna add some dirt to the bottom here just to get me a base to get going because I'm gonna have some dirt in the plants that I'm gonna use. Now, I'm telling you, when you do a succulent garden, I have a lot of classes where people will come. I always look for a really cool container that they can make their succulent gardens in. And then we let them go around and like choose different color schemes because the succulents come in a lot of different colors. You know, so they'll get a choice of this tray and a choice of this tray. And then they'll go back and they'll put their succulent gardens together. So I can do this succulent garden and it will be totally cool. And I'm only gonna put, I think I got five plants that I'm gonna put in here. And then, I think it's the coolest when you put the embellishments in it, the moss and the rocks and the bark and all the other little things that you're gonna put in here as accessories to bring it to life. So I think that's really cool. So as you can see here, I just put that much dirt in here. Now other things that I'm gonna use, and I'm actually gonna take my gloves off at this point because I need to be able to kind of feel what it is that I'm doing. I'm gonna leave my dirt right here just in case I need some more. 
but other things that I brought, and I might or might not use everything that I brought, but I do have some paint brushes here, and these are just cheap old paint brushes. I use these to help me clean off the succulents when I'm done, so that if I get dirt down inside of them, I can use this brush and I can just, you know, get that dirt right off of there. Um, the other thing that I brought with me, I did bring an aloe with me that was a pop off of a bigger aloe, so I have one of those. I brought some black rocks with me, so I have these black uh, rocks, and these aren't actually rocks. These are actually recycled plastic made to look like rocks. Isn't that cool? So I have some of those. I don't know if I'll use those or not because this truck is already so dark. I don't know if I'll put dark uh, rocks in there. I don't know if you can even see those, but see, those are my rocks. All right, and then I have some white gravel. So I brought some white gravel because I thought the contrast with the white gravel would be good. So I might use that. I do have green moss. This is just the loose moss from Super Moss. And then I have some red because of Valentine's Day. I decided to grab red reindeer moss. So I have some of that as well. Then I also grabbed some bark. So I have some bark here that I might use in there. I like to use the bark. It gives it kind of a vertical element. And I also have some Spanish moss and I got the brown because I thought the brown would contrast nicely with the red. And then there's like this brown pantene in the truck itself that kind of looks like it's rusted. So I thought that would go good. And then I do have this little round wood disc. I might or might not use this. It's kind of big, so I don't know if I'll use it or not. But I did grab a, a, a little white pebble like this that's flat. And then, oh, for my Valentine, I have a gnome. Isn't he the cutest? So that's my gnome that I'm gonna put in there. And it says, I can't tell. Um, there is no gnome, gnome one like you. How cute is that? So I thought I'd put that in there. And then I got a sparkle heart to put in there too. <laughs> and then I also have like some branches and some thistle. And so we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. So the first thing I always do when I do this is I look for my biggest plant first to put in. So I got this one right here. And this is uh, an Echeveria. I believe this one is a Parva is what it's called. And then I have a Peperomia. Now I'm not gonna shove this whole Peperoni in there, but what I am gonna do is take it out of its uh, container and I'm gonna get a piece of it, okay? So I have pulled this whole, this just this little piece of Peperonia off of there. And I actually think I'm gonna go a little bit smaller. I just want a little bit of it because I love that it's uh, different colors. And I love that it's gonna give me a little bit of height right back here in the back of the truck. And see how much easier it is to pack it in if the dirt is a little bit wet. If that dirt was all dry, it would be really hard to get that in there. Now, the other thing I wanna do is I think, see, once you, then you can move things around too. I'm gonna to move this to the front because I'm making this backwards. And sometimes I don't think about that, that I'm standing in front of a camera. All right, and I'm gonna put the aloe behind it. So I've created my height right up here at the back of the truck. And see, I love the two different textures. I love the different greens that are in that. I just think that's great. All right, then I wanna use this one. Now what I do is I do knock off most of the dirt that's on these. Uh, one, so that the roots get going a little bit better, but it is easier to tuck them in to your garden and it doesn't have to go straight up and down. So right now I'm kind of putting this at an angle and see how close together I'm planting them. And that's okay. They, they will do just fine being planted together like that. Now I also have this one here, which is I like to look for different colors, different shapes, different textures. So that way my garden is really interesting. And so I'm gonna put this one here. I wanna leave a little bit of space in the middle there, but I still wanna be able to see this one because I think I wanna tuck some bark in right here in the middle and I wanna be able to bury that a little bit, kinda of like that so that there's some visual interest right here in the middle. All right, and then I'm gonna take this one here. Isn't that cute? I love this one. And again, I'm just gonna break up these roots just a little bit. Let's do it over the top of this. All right, and I'm gonna put this one here in the back and I am gonna get a little bit more dirt and tuck it down in there. Okay, so I like all of that so far. All right, I did leave room right back here in the back of my truck. So I'm gonna turn my cardboard here. So you can kind of see, see? I should have brought my Lazy Susan, then I could have spun it around. 
Okay, so I've kind of done that. And now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna leave this spot right here open because I wanna be able to either put my gnome, my rocks, my bunny, I wanna be able to put something there. So I love the way it looks like right here. That visual is so nice. I just love that. And then I'll clean it up at the end when I'm done. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the green moss, okay? So I'm gonna take my green moss and I'm gonna fill in around everything, okay? So when you put the green moss in, the goal is it to pack it in there and shove it in there. You kind of want it to be fluffy. You want it to, you want to be able to see it. Uh, now the moss serves as two purposes. One, it helps keep moisture in the soil a little bit longer. Two, it's pretty, okay? So it does make it look better. It fills in all that black dirt. And I do want to tuck it down in between things and I don't make it so stiff that, see how it's sticking out here on the edge? right there, you wanna be able to see it. Okay, so I covered all my dirt with moss. Now I am gonna put a little bitty bit right here. Sorry about the phone ringing. All right, I'm gonna put that right there. All right, so I've got that all done. And then what I can do is I can take my brush and I can brush off any of the dirt that's in here. I can clean off my little succulents here. All right, now I'm gonna turn this again. And once again, I think I don't want to use the black rocks. I think they're almost, this too much black. So I think what I want to do is I kind of want to highlight this, these greens right here. So I think what I want to do is add some white rock. So I'm going to add some white rock in here to draw some attention to this area right here. I know that's probably a robocall. We get so many robocalls, but I refuse to get those services that filter the calls because I hate it when I call someplace and I have to push a hundred buttons just to talk to somebody. So I would rather not do that. So I still want some of the green to show through, but see how I kind of brought some attention right here because the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to nestle my little gnome. I'm going to nestle him right in here like this. So he'll stand up right there and I'll have to turn it around to see if I've got him in the right place. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna add some of this brown Spanish moss, and I don't want it all over the place. So the green moss is used to cover everything, and I'm just gonna use the Spanish moss, the reindeer moss, just as accents. So I don't want dots of it all over the place. I wanna pick one visual place where I can put it that will draw your eye or will, it will look interesting. So I don't want it to overtake everything. I just want it to add visual interest. So I'm actually gonna add mine right back here and I'm gonna let a little bit of it drape over like this, okay? And I'll have to spin it around so I can see it, but I do know looking at it from this direction, I do wanna tuck some of this red moss right here. And so I've got these like pink red margins on this pepperonia and I kinda wanna draw attention to that. So I kinda wanna have a little bit of this moss peeking up behind that succulent. So I'm gonna turn this around. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> well, it's a concrete pot, so that's why it's heavy. Oh, I love that gnome there. That looks so good. And then I do think that I wanna tuck a little bit of it on the other side as well. Right back here where the bark is and that other little baby succulent is. So I've got him there. I think I'm gonna take that little piece. Actually, I want a different piece just right there, I think I need a little bit more moss right here where my rocks are. All right, so far I'm liking everything about this. All right, I think for the most part, I've got everything in here that I want. So as you can see, this is kind of your back view there. I'm not gonna use those rocks. And I didn't use the wood disc, okay? So I've got my little gnome in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is, I think I wanna put my little heart in here, so I am going to grab my little heart because this is gonna be a Valentine um, dish garden, or dish, I guess it's a succulent garden that I'm gonna put out there. So I'm gonna cut my stem down and I'm gonna put my little heart. Now I think I want it a little bit shorter. And actually, you know what? I think I wanna put the little heart right here, like this. Nope, I don't like it there. Oh, here we go. 
I think I like it right there. Okay, so I'm gonna spin that around. I had to move it to a couple different places until I found where I liked it. Yep, I like it there because I can see it from both sides. Okay, so that goes there. Now, if I wanna create some more vertical height in this, I could do that by using some branches. So these are birch branches that I went outside and I picked them up off the ground, um, but I could add these as well to give it some vertical interest this way. And this is just two little branches that I'm gonna put in there. I don't like that one. So let me try a different branch. Let's see what I got here. Let's see. I think I like this one, except I need to trim it a little bit. It's kind of wild. And I don't want it to be quite so in your face, pokey in the eye. So I'm gonna trim it down. Sorry, I'm trimming it over this container over here so I don't have to clean it up off the ground. Okay, so I trim that down there. That's way better. Otherwise, it was a little overwhelming in your face. Trim that little piece right there. Okay, so I like that. All right, so there is my beautiful succulent garden for Valentine's Day. How cool is that? Now, when Valentine's Day is over, I can take the red reindeer moss out. I can add like a chartreuse or a purple. I think I even have some rose pink that I could add to. But I would take out the heart and I would take out the gnome and then maybe I would add a little bunny back here, okay? And he's gonna ride on the back of the truck. You know, he's gonna ride here like this. And then I have these, I have these really cool crystal flowers and I could add one of these crystal flowers in here so he could like ride like this and the flower could be next to him. Or I could put another succulent in and I could actually tape him and have him like riding on the front of the truck. See, I could turn it like this. I could put another succulent in the place of the heart and the gnome. I'm gonna put him back in there. And then I could just tuck this away and use it next year. But look at that, how cute is that? And I would just get a piece of two-sided tape and put it on its butt and put it on there. And then this would be really cute too. I just think this turned out so pretty. So there you go. There's my beautiful succulent garden. I hope that this inspired you and you want to go and make a succulent garden. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you get notified of when our next videos are. Typically, we post on Thursday and Friday nights. Um, and if this was your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoyed our video. If you are returning, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting our business. You guys have a great day. I'm gonna come around and turn the camera off now and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Succulents, yay!